Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and it's Labor Day Monday, so it's an even nicer time for that weekly painting progress, because I get to go get more done, and I am finally free of the confines of this room that I'm usually filming in. Uh, my quarantine has been lifted, and I'm free to mingle amongst uh, proper society again. So just a quick recap, we got a couple of more boxers from War Games Atlantic done. You might have seen I put a video up on them recently. If you haven't seen that, you might want to take a look. I think it's a really cool kit. Oh man, there is a lack of all of the crazy various kung fu paraphernalia and martial arts weaponry that I would have loved to have seen. There's still some cool stuff there, and you can see we've got some of the Kansu Braves that <clears throat> I got hanging around. And I finally figured out which guy is the one that was using the arms off of the World War I Germans. And naturally, as I say that, I can't find the dude. Typical. Typical High Lord Tamperley. Oh, well. If I can find him, I'll stick him on Instagram or something. So anyway, got these guys done. This guy technically isn't one of the Braves, but he got painted like one. You can tell the Brave guys because they got the longer coats. Yep. So those guys got done this week. Actually, they got done right before I finished filming that video. A random Nolzer's Deep Cuts Warforged. Because why not? Still got a few of these unpainted, pre-primed guys laying around. I don't know if this is before or after or since I've got a 3D printer, but we got him done regardless. Not the most exciting figure, but it's okay. So, for more exciting figures, we got one of those Battle Yak guys. I cannot remember what they're called, but I know they had a fun, crazy name, and it was definitely something complex, but that's always the case with the Battle Yak stuff. This is a fun one to paint, actually. I did it a lot simpler than I had planned, but that's okay. I love this boiler suit that they got going on. I went with the basic shock prod. You can't really see I tried to paint it differently, but oh well. I did not do the best job of removing it from the supports. But that's on me. I gotta say, Battle Yak's support game has really kicked up a major couple of notches since they first started. I think I, I started supporting them and checking them out like when they very first started. I think the Shark Dudes were like one of their first releases. It's really cool seeing these artists continue to grow and improve. If you guys haven't checked out their stuff, they've got some really neat ones. In fact, i got to get on top of printing up. They have these big, cool, crazy, multi-armed suits of armor dudes. But yeah, this is a fun release, too. You can always use evil minions in boiler suits. Oh, shoot, where did, Oh, there it is. Okay. Totally unrelated. I found the guy. I know this is the German gun from the World War One kit because it's got the bayonet, and none of the other... Gun hands have those bayonets. So, yeah, that is not even a boxer arm. That is actually straight off the German kit. Totally unrelated, but I, I don't know why I wanted to show that and share that. Speaking of sharing, another Comet Lord figure. Comet Lord's actually got some new um, physical pressed models coming out of their stuff, including their crazy false hydra thing. That is really impressive, especially if you like, you know, nasty body horror influenced Kingdom Death stuff. That is one model I've been meaning to print myself. So if you want physical prints of their stuff, they got those coming. Nice, solid figures. I don't remember what this guy was called. Demon Hunter, Gunslinger, or something. I'm sure you can find him, but like all the other Comet Lord figures, there's like a bajillion poses of him, uh, and I know they made like a whole Nero Angelus version, you know, all devil triggered out, but I totally had to paint him up in Dante colors. I was thinking Devil May Cry too. I really like Dante's look in number two. Funny thing is I have never beaten a Devil May Cry game. True story. Played them all. Now my wife, on the other hand, who's very anti-video games, I know beat the original trilogy. Every one of them. And the one where you could play as Virgil too. She was so into it. She's like, I hate video games. And then like proceeds to do better than me at all of them. Go figures. But there's some really fun stuff from Commodore, and I've got some interesting figures of his in my queue to get painted as it is, so hopefully we'll get to those soon. Alright. Here is 
what I can only refer to as my Castellax Kenshiro. This is a Station Forge model, and I love that he's just kind of swaggering through a post-apocalyptic landscape with rags all over him, much like Kenshiro at the beginning of the Fist of the North Star movie. You haven't seen it. He actually comes from the same release that the Tech Priest here is like. You know, he's going to talk a bunch of trash while his big body here is going to be standing over him. But this is a cool little set. They had a bunch of different variations on these guys. If you wanted to have them in the tatters, I mean, you could. You don't have to. Obviously, I wanted them. I want to have a bunch of swaggering, post-apocalyptic looking, you know, mech suit guys. Why not? And the cool little tassels and stuff. I don't know. They're like on a holy pilgrimage or something. And I want to say they had a couple different gun variations, too for those of you who are into that. In fact, I think they just had some new robots get shown off the other day, so something to think about there. All right, another figure that I'm quite happy to show off is one that I just found out has a sequel coming. This is one of the RNA Studio... Uh, I forgot what the set was called now. Oh my God, my mind just went blank. Seriously, dude. Shoot, I can't remember. This was a, it was a Kickstarter, and I know you can get these guys on their My Mini Factory page, uh, but it was a whole set, and I did a video on it too. Shoot, I cannot remember what they were called. I want to say Xenoblade, but that's not right. There was a whole set of these guys, and they were very obviously, you know, high fantasy Japanese RPG inspired figures, and there's actually supposed to be a Kickstarter for a new set of them starting today. So, I don't know about you guys, I'm eagerly going to be checking that out. Now, I know it's not the best paint job, and that's always the case. I didn't do it exactly like the artwork on it, but that's okay. Why can't I remember what set you were from? Oh my god, that's driving me nuts. I'll put the name of it down in the comments, the description, whatever area of the video. And in case you guys are curious about any of these things, obviously, we'll have links for all that. And I will put the link to whatever this Kickstarter is called that I cannot remember. Dude, you did a freaking video on it, too. How can you not remember these things? So, yeah. Uh, pretty good. Oh! How can I forget? Oh, my God. I almost didn't show you guys the cool stuff. Well, I mean, all the cool stuff. So, the other day, I put up a video on Broken Anvil Mini's uh, Raijin. And I'd almost painted it all before I got COVID. And there you can see his base. And it would probably help if I zoomed it out a little bit, wouldn't it? So let's try doing that then. And there's more of him. Can we keep... There we go. There we go. You can do it. And now it's all totally dark. Cool. And crooked. Let's see if I can adjust the camera a little bit. Ugh. No, camera doesn't want to work. Okay, fine. We will leave you as is. So, fun thing, I actually broke this again right before I started filming today. Literally. That sucked. I broke him in three parts. And so, you can see here, he's got all these little Oni Goblinoid thingies hanging around, banging on the drums with him. So those broke. Those all fell off. And I had a hell of a time trying to figure out where to put them on there. And I still want to point out that his sword, at least at the time of this filming, the original file, did not match the scabbard. Shame, shame, shame. What a technicality, but it's okay. It's a cool model, and I just, I still, I worry now, especially that I've broken it, um, with the way that he is attached to that base. It just is quite worrisome to me. But at least so far, everything is okay. But it's a really neat model. I'll have to post it on Instagram or something. Oh, but you know what? That's not the only thing I did. That's not the only thing I did. Check this sucker out. I have to walk over the, across the room to go grab him because it's so freaking big. So I had mentioned before, and I think I did a video on this actually, I had never seen anybody paint the big demon dragon from Dragon Trapper's Lodge. So, I did. And you can see there, I mean, let's, let's, let's put these dudes in perspective. I mean, our friend from whatever the something blade. I think it was something blade. God 
damn, I cannot think of it. A normal sized human miniature and that dragon. Okay. He is absolutely bonkers, ridiculous big, and it is an amazing feat. I painted the whole damn thing with a brush, which was incredibly stupid of me, but I did it. Why? I don't know. I'm like, oh, and there went one of his little Oni friends. Thanks a lot, you little dork. So, my dad has a airbrush that would have made things so much easier, but nope. He's a big dude. A really big dude. A very big, impressive. This is like the most High Lord Tamburlaine thing I think I have painted in some time. I'm proud of the fact that it's actually done. With a brush, no less. Uh, that was just, yeah. I got so sick of working on this thing that I, I know for a fact that I probably could have done a much better job in much thorough, much more thorough job. And I did try to do some shading and like all the little cracks. He's got like, it's supposed to be like lava or something spilling out. You can see it more on his base there. And I just was lame and contrasted his swords. I, if I had the patience, maybe I'd do a better job. But I just, I, I couldn't take anymore. <laughs> I really couldn't. I'm like, I've had enough and we need to stop. So yeah, uh, definitely quite the impressive piece. I'm going to have to find a spot to put him because he's just so big. But I'm glad he's done. This was one of those models that was on like my short list of things. Can I actually get it finished? And yes, yes I did, even though his sword is kind of crooked there. And there's actually errors on his base, but thankfully it seems to be okay. I'm just proud of the fact that I actually did a decent job of covering up a lot of the gaps. They are not super obvious on the body, maybe a little bit more so on the base. I don't care. Overall, I am quite pleased with myself for the week. Maybe not the best painting, but <laughs> I want to say I think I made up for it in terms of just mass this week. Even if our Raijin friend here was finished a little earlier, that's okay. You can see my mess on the table there. There's leftover guys from COVID that need to get put away, but that's okay. Like I said, we'll have links down below if you want to try your luck at painting our big, giant, ridiculous friend here. By all means, I highly encourage you guys. I'd love to be an enabler in that regard. And hopefully somebody out there can do a better job than me. I'll post him up on Reddit and Discord, and that way other people can see it. And hopefully we'll see some other versions show up in the future. When anybody's got to do, take one for the team and get it out there, I'll do it. I don't mind. So with that said, hopefully everybody is staying safe. Hopefully everybody's enjoying their holidays and vacation times for wherever you are and not melting in the sun like we are down in Southern California right now. And this has been High Lord Tamburlaine with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.